Rudolf Ivanovich Abel was the highest ranking Russian to face spy charges in the United States. His story has been popularized recently by the 2015 movie Bridge of Spies, starring Tom Hanks and Mark Rylance. Born in 1903 as William Fisher in the United Kingdom, Fisher's father was a staunch socialist and Bolshevik. This part of England was great for this family, concentrated wealth, heavy industry, and grim working class conditions. The family moved back in 1921 when communism prevailed in Russia. Upon arrival, Fisher joined Komsomol, a communist party youth organization, as a translator. Fluent in German, Russian, French, and English, he was a useful person for deception of German forces over radio. For two years, he served in the Red Army, working in a radio battalion. In 1927, he joined the GPU Security Agency to train operatives in radio. Eventually, he joined the KGB and immigrated illegally to the U.S. by way of Canada in 1948. As a KGB colonel, he worked as an artist, managing Russian agents in Brooklyn. Fisher grew tired of Agent Reino Hyhanen's bad behavior, and the KGB ordered him to Moscow. Hyhanen feared punishment, so he fled to the U.S. Embassy in Paris and outed Fisher, codenamed Mark. The U.S. set up surveillance to capture this Mark and eventually found him in an apartment building in Brooklyn. They eventually found Mark, named Emil R. Dreyfus, and arrested him on alien charges in 1957. After a search of his apartment, they found false papers identifying him as Martin Collins, Andrew Coyotis, and Emil Dreyfus. They also found cipher pads, surveillance film, hollow shaving brushes and cufflinks, and other trick equipment. Fisher went by Rudolf Abel in court, which is suspected as not only a signal that he'd been captured, but also a test for the Americans and their new Russian allies. The Brooklyn Bar Association appointed Nuremberg Prosecution Team veteran James Donovan as his lawyer, who believed, Everyone deserves a defense. Every person matters. Abel was found guilty in 1957 of conspiracy to transmit defense information to the Soviet Union conspiracy to obtain defense information, and failure to register as a foreign agent. Do many foreign agents register? He was sentenced to a fine and 45 years in prison. He avoided the death penalty because Donovan claimed the apartment search was unwarranted, and... It is possible that in the foreseeable future, an American of equivalent rank might be captured by Soviet Russia. We might want to have someone to trade. If we send this guy to his death, we leave ourselves wide open. No policy in our back pocket for the day the storm comes. Nice speech. As a result of this trial, the Department of Defense delivered messages to the American people such as these. Somewhere in this country right now, trained agents, just as clever, just as inconspicuous, possessing large amounts of money and the most refined tools of espionage, are going on with Colonel Abel's job. These men are hard-working, dedicated to their cause, and will stop at nothing to get their hands on classified information. The Department of Defense Security Program is designed to defeat their efforts. By complying with these requirements, you live up to your security obligations and thereby aid your country. Whether Colonel Abel's successors succeed or fail is strictly up to you. Five years later, Abel was used in an exchange for CIA U-2 pilot Francis Gary Powers and American student Frederick Pryor at Checkpoint Charlie and Glienicke Bridge in Berlin. After returning to Moscow, Fisher was given an Order of Lenin in 1966 and published a KGB-approved memoir in 1968. The KGB, however, forced him to retire in 1971 
and he died of lung cancer later that year.